Pi everyone and welcome back for another UE4 tutorial. This tutorial is going to carry on from where we left off before with the teleportation video. Now in that video I mentioned that there are many different ways of doing this uh, technique and I asked of you if you wanted to see those techniques leave a comment below and you did. A lot of you came back to me asking to see different ways of doing this so I thought I'd go ahead and oblige. So last time we set up so you have one actor with two teleport pads and you just separate them out per instance. What we can do today is have two separate insta uh, actors which we can then uh, place down anywhere we like and show how we can communicate between two teleporters. So I'm going to leave all the art stuff I've got from the last episode uh, but at this time I'm going to create a new blueprint class and I'm going to choose actor and this is going to be called teleporter B. Okay, uh, So this will be the second type of teleporter. So let's carry on with how we uh, set this up. So first of all we need a mesh, so I'm going to go static mesh and I'm going to choose from the list here my teleport pad. There it is. And alongside that we also need our sphere cl uh, collision. And the sphere collision we're going to increase the size here to 100 in the radius and we're going to raise up a little bit like so. Okay. Hit compile. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much all we need to do for our teleporter pad. Uh, alongside this, we also need to set up a variable or two. So the first variable we need to set up is the partner pad that this thing's going to teleport towards. So we're going to make a new variable and we're going to call this one target pad. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the type of it to match this actor. So we're going to search for teleporter B and you want to choose an object reference. Now tick instance editable and that will make the little eyeball show showing that this is a public variable. Now what that means is that when I drag this into the world and then drag another one into the world I can click on this first one here and on the default settings on the detail side we can choose what target pad we want it to target towards. So I'm going to use a little eyedropper and pick that pad. I'm then going to pick this one do a little eyedropper tool and pick the other pad. So now these are two are linked together. Okay. So that's how that works. But let's actually do the actual code part of this now. So now we've got those uh, target pads set up. What we can do is work on the overlaps of that sphere there. And it's going to work quite similarly to the other teleportation. So start off things with a begin play. And we're going to right click and get the player character. Now this gives us just a generic character, we need to actually cast this to the first person character in this instance. And then we're going to store that as a variable here. So promote to variable and call it my player. Next we're going to do the overlap of our sphere. So right click on your sphere component, add event and add on component begin overlap. So this event will trigger when we overlap that sphere collision. We need to check the overlap is equal to the capsule component of our player character. So drag my player out and then from there get capsule component and it's right at the bottom of the list there. So I'm just going to get that one particular component and we can compare it to the other component that's overlapped our sphere here. So do equals equals and plug that in. Now we also want to check to make sure that the uh, pad isn't on cooldown. So need a new variable and we'll call it on cooldown. And we're going to check that this is not true. So drag the on cooldown out and then make it not. And we need to combine these two together because they have to be both be true in order to carry on. So do an and and then we put that into a branch. And plug that in. Okay, um, so the, very much the same as the last time. The main difference that we're going to get into eventually is this on cooldown. Now when we go through one of the teleporters, we need to tell the other one to also go on cooldown as well. So both need to be on cooldown. This stops it from looping back and forth uh, between the two teleportations. So after we've done that, we are going to uh, set a timer by event. 
and the event here we're going to go down to cooldown oh, not cooldown um custom and we're going to call it uh teleport to target and the time it's going to take is going to take two seconds uh, in the last video i did it as a variable so we can do that as a variable here teleport time and we'll do it as a float compile it and set the two seconds to default and let's plug that into the time here so to recap when we overlap the sphere it's going to check whether or not we're on cooldown and we're going to check if the capsule component has been the one that overlapped the sphere if this, these are both true it'll carry on and then it's going to set a timer by the event so this time is like an alarm clock so after two seconds it's then going to call this event which is going to handle the teleportation so speaking of teleportation we need to drag our functions and create a new function called teleport and this is going to take uh, a simple uh, bit of code we're going to just drag out my player we're going to set actor location and the actor location is going to come from the target pad so drag your target pad out and oh apologies i forgot one component we need to make the target component for where we're going to land actually in fact we can just use this sphere this sphere you can see the origin is right there so we could use that if you want that's quite a good place to put it so we use that so get the sphere it's right down the bottom get sphere and we're going to get the location of that sphere component so get world location and finally plug that into your target new location so that's going to transport the player over to the sphere location of the other target pad now once we're on the target pad we're going to drag target pad uh, also at start before we do the actor location change the target pads on cooldown to be uh, true so get on cooldown and set it and we're going to set that to being true okay and if you want as well we can also set the cooldown on the current teleporter um you can just at the end it doesn't really matter too much i'm going to set that to also be true okay Okay, so that's our teleport function pretty much done. So go back to your event graph, and on the teleport to target, we're just going to drag that function out and plug it in. Now, the return value of our timer, we want to store that because what we're going to do is make it so when you end overlap uh, before you teleport, it will cancel the alarm. So we're going to promote that to a variable and call it teleport timer. And then we're going to do the end overlap. So right click on the sphere component again, add, uh, add event and add on component end overlap. Now we're going to check whether or not the other actor is overlapping the uh, sphere here. So we're going to go other actor is overlapping the sphere. Yeah, do it like that. There you go. And we'll put that as a condition then on true we're going to drag our teleport timer out choose get and we're going to use the clear and then validate timer by handle node to get rid of the timer here so once we leave the area it will get rid of the alarm clock so it doesn't set off the teleporter once we've done that we need to call the on cooldown and choose set and we're going to leave it as false so now it will allow it to re-teleport the player so to recap what this is going to do is on the overlap we're going to check whether or not we're on cooldown and if it is actually in fact the player's capsule overlapping the teleporter and if it is you're going to start a timer up for two seconds by default anyway after two seconds it's going to call this custom event and which is going to call this function and on that function we're getting the target pads variable here and we're getting their cooldown turning it on and we're changing this getting the sphere location of that teleport pad as well and using that as the target location for our set actor location and finally we're going to turn cooldown on this one as well so let's test this out so i've got two pads here hit play and i'll go into one and it's teleporting me to the other one okay 
And if I get off this one, because I've I dropped it to the other pad, if I click on here, it'll tell me what brought me to the other pad. There you go. Now the benefit this one has over the first method is I can actually add a third one in here, and this one can teleport to the first pad. The first pad can teleport to the second pad, and the second pad here can teleport to the third pad. So you can have as many as you like, you like chained together. So to show you that, pad two here will take us to pad three. Make sure I get in that circle correctly. There you go. And pad three will take us to uh, pad one. Again, make sure I get in that circle. There we go. There you go. Pad one. Didn't, if you make sure you step off it to cool down. There you go. And that's all there is to it. Thanks very much for watching. I'm going to do one more video uh, on teleporters which showcases another method. And uh, that will probably be it for teleportation. So thank you to all my patrons for supporting me so far. Thank you for voting for this video and suggesting it as one of the ones you wanted to see. If you have any further suggestions, leave a comment below. I'll be interested to see what you guys want to see next. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.